In this demo series video, we're going to be going through how to set up single sign-on with Active Directory Federation services within Intersight. Let's get into it. Before we get into the configuration of SSO for Intersight with ADFS, let's look at why you would even consider single sign-on. So you have a Cisco Intersight account and you have a group of administrative users that you'd like to have access. Out of the box, the experience would be each of those users needs to have a Cisco login ID, and then whoever created the Intersight account could go in and add those Cisco IDs into the Intersight account, and you could use the RBAC structure of privileges, groups, roles to define what level of access they have within Intersight. And again, that's all maintained directly within the Intersight user interface. If you have a small, smaller administrative team, this might work just fine. If you have uh, a more revolving set of administrators that may come and go, or you have a larger set of uh, administrative teams that you need to support, this could become more of a challenge at, over time and as it scales. If in your private infrastructure, you have an identity service provider such as Active Directory, then you might, can, you might look at how could I somehow leverage that identity provider for users that need to access Intersight. Now with any public service, there's a challenge with this, is how do I take an identity provider that lives in a trusted private infrastructure and securely allow, in a, in a again, trusted way, that public provider to interface with it. Now you might think, well, I could just add a firewall rule that NATS my Active Directory servers through publicly and only allow the uh, IPs tied to that public SaaS offering, in this case, Intersight, to talk with it. And this is just a very, very bad security practice. No InfoSec team would approve such a, a type of integration. And for that reason, it's not even a supported option with Intersight. Another path you may consider is building a VPN tunnel. So a more secure, secure, trusted way in which to connect those two worlds. Uh, the problem with this option is it's, there's just too much required both on the user side to set up their end of the VPN connection, as well as on the public service offering side, which in this case would be Intersight. And for that reason, this again is not an option that is supported. Yet another option, and this one actually is supported, is Going back to the initial approach of maintaining all that user configuration directly in Intersight, but having a script that executes periodically that has trusted access to Active Directory, maybe via VPN, maybe it's a, a, a workstation or server that already lives inside of your trusted environment that can collect the user information, maybe in a CSV, and can translate the, the user and group mappings that you want into Intersight related configuration through an API call. So using the, the RBAC, RBAC constructs again with an Intersight of username, privilege, role, groups, and just translating what you pull from Active Directory and constantly pushing that into Intersight, syncing that with Intersight. Now, while this is a valid supported option, over time, it can become painful. What happens if a user were to change their last name? What happens when a user leaves the company? How often and how quickly do you want to respond to those types of changes? And what we're here to talk about today is yet another option which is supported, which is single sign-on with Active Directory Federation Services. If you're unfamiliar with ADFS, this is Microsoft's Solution for Identity Management provides a single sign-on experience for web applications, uses SAML 2.0, which is what is required for uh, Intersight, uh, provides better web service interoperability, and it does this by providing a claim for the user on behalf of Active Directory. So how does this workflow look? A user would initiate a login to Intersight. There's two login prompts when you go to Intersight today. One is for your Cisco ID. The other is for a single sign-on domain. 
So in this case, you would go to the single sign-on domain, put in your email address, and that is going to redirect you to ADFS. So this ADFS instance would live in your private infrastructure, most likely. Uh, and so if your user is already sitting in your trusted network, that's fine. If these users are gonna be uh, not remotely tied in, maybe somewhere on the public internet and you wanna support that, then you might look at poking your ADFS server through your firewall. This is not Active Directory services. This is a totally separate service. It's web-based. So this would only be communicating over 443. So that's something to consider. But that authentication is then going to happen against your ADFS login prompt. We'll show you this in the demo. In the background, there's gonna be an authentication that occurs with Active Directory. And a claim is then going to be issued to the user typically in the form of a cookie. And that login is then going to occur back to Intersight using that claim. We will go into the specifics of how you configure all this, all the way from setting up the ADFS role on a Windows server, creating the claim rules, how do you set this up on the Intersight side. There are some requirements though up front that you need to consider. One is you need to have a account admin privileges within Intersight. So whenever you go and set this up on the Intersight side, you need to be at least account admin. Obviously you need to have Active Directory if you're trying to set up Active Directory support. You need a Windows server, such as Windows Server 2019, 2016, or later uh, to enable the ADFS role, which we'll walk through. You will lastly need a certificate that is trusted by all of the users that you plan to authenticate using ADFS. Now that we've gone through the why of SSO, let's look at how we would configure that in Intersight. Logged in as an account administrator, you would click on the gear icon, go to settings, and the first step is going to be to register a domain name. So I'm going to add domain name. I'm blurring this out just because I don't want anybody trying to log into my actual SSO domain ID. Uh, so the first, it's going to be set as pending. And this is because you have to go in and verify that domain name. So you would copy that inner site equals key and <clears throat> work with your DNS team to add that as a TXT record for your domain. Once that is in place, you can hit the verify button. It'll verify that that TXT record exists. And if it does, it will show up as verified. Now that we have our domain name configured and verified, we can go into single sign-on and start the configuration by downloading the SP metadata. This is inner site related metadata that we will use inside of our ADFS configuration. We're now inside the virtual machine. We're gonna set up ADFS on. You can see it's running server 2019. I'm in Server Manager, and I'm gonna click Manage, Add Roles and Features. We'll click through the wizard. We're going to enable a role. I'm using this server, and I'm going to select the Active Directory Federation Services role, and leave everything else pretty much the defaults. So next, next, next. This is a lab, so I will just restart the virtual machine if I need to, and click Install. I'm gonna speed this up for the purposes of time. I've also blurred out some sensitive information about our lab setup. Once the role is enabled, you'll see a notification that there are additional configuration steps that need to be taken for ADFS. So we'll click on that to complete the setup. Click next in the wizard. And you will need a use a role with domain permissions to perform this step. You will need that certificate we talked about that is going to be used for uh, the users who are authenticating via SSO with ADFS. So this needs to be a, certi a certificate that your users have in their trusted cert repository. It does need a uh, group managed service account. I'm going to go ahead and use one that I already had created because I've gone through this process a few times. Otherwise, just create a new one at the top. And in this example, I'm using the internal database. You could also specify an external SQL Server instance if you wanted to. I have this 
uh, warning because I've already set up ADFS on this server before and I just removed the role for the purposes of the demo. So you probably won't see that message. Uh, a few benign warnings here that we don't have to worry about. So at this point, ADFS is configured within the server. Now I'm gonna go into the help docs within Intersight. So intersight.com slash help, search for ADFS. And in this guide, it's going to show me how to set up my claim rules. So I'm gonna go back into server manager, tools, ADFS management. And I'm going to set up first my relying party trust. And this is where I'm going to import that metadata file that I got from Intersight. So there's my metadata.xml. I'm gonna give it a name. It could be whatever name you want. I'm just gonna call it Intersight. And we'll click through. The rest of these don't really have to be changed. And now we are ready to set up our claim issuance policy. So I'm gonna go back to the help docs, scroll down, and this is gonna show me the claim rules that I need to add. The first one is going to map attributes from Active Directory into my claim. So I'm gonna set this up as a custom rule. Click next, I just copy and pasted the, the rule syntax from the help docs, give it whatever name I want. I'm calling it map attributes. And now this is gonna grab those attributes from Active Directory as part of the login and put those inside of the claim. I'm then going to scroll down and look at a transform rule. So this is gonna transform one of those attributes that I got into what Intersight is expecting. So this is going to be a transform an incoming claim. Uh, I highlighted in the help docs where it says you must type in email underscore address. Do not select it from the drop down menu. So that's very, very important. And then I'm going to select name ID, which is about midway down, and email. And that is it for the rules. Again, all of that was directly from the help docs within Intersight. I'll go back to the documentation. And the last thing it says to do is to go to this URL. And there is a placeholder in that URL for your specific ADFS instance. And now I've clicked on that. It gives me my metadata file from the ADFS side, I go back into Intersight, add an identity provider, give it a name, select the domain name I did before. And now this is the metadata file that I got from going to the URL in the last step. I'm gonna hit save. And now I have set up my SSO. So to test this, I'm gonna log out. I mentioned at the beginning in the slides there are two different login prompts. I'm gonna to go to the one on the right for a single sign-on domain. Again, I'm blurring out my domain name. Now I'm being redirected to my ADFS instance. I'm gonna log in with my username and password. In this case, I'm using the short name, the short name format. I'm able to do that because I've done some customization to my ADFS. You can set up theming and you can also do things like I just did where I can just use my short username. Uh, otherwise you need to type in your full email. Now I was not authorized when I logged in because I have no group mappings within Intersight. So what I need to do is create a group within Intersight and then map that to an identity provider group. So this would be a security group that my user account is a part of. I just showed you there, the names don't have to be the same. You can name it whatever you want on the Intersight side. And now I'm mapping two roles to that Active Directory security group, Trail Boss and Account Administrator. Trail Boss is, is a custom role that we've created in this lab. And so now I'm going to log out. I was in as account administrator to make those uh, group mappings. And I'm going to log back in with my SSO account. And now I can see there are my two roles, Trail Boss and Account Administrator. I can click into those. And now I am successfully logged in with an Active Directory user using single sign-on and ADFS.
Thank you for watching this demo. We hope you found it helpful. Visit intersight.com help for more information.